Hello, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Learn Live, uh, where today's focus will be the Microsoft Identity Platform. My name is Nick McCullum. I am a principal fast track engineer, and one of the areas I specialize in is identity, along with application development and our platform as a service offerings. Also with me today is my colleague, Bapa Banerjee. Bapa, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Sure. Thank you, Nick. Uh, welcome, everyone. My name is Bapa Banerjee. I'm a senior fast track engineer in the fast track uh, group within Microsoft. Uh, my expertise is also in the, uh, in the identity world, you know, so looking forward to have a great discussion with you, Nick. Great. So this should be a great topic. Um, you know, for those of us that have been around for a while, um, we can remember the days of managing identity and auth authentication uh, using things like uh, databases and forms based authentication. Um, thankfully, things have progressed <laughs> um, to a much better place where we have these uh, fantastic identity provider services today uh, that allow you to kind of move that functionality out of your application uh, and put that in a secure and, and safe place and kind of take the responsibility away from you for managing uh, user information and, and user credentials. Um, also with us today, I'd like to, to welcome uh, Walter Myers. He is going to be our, our moderator. Um, so if you have any questions or things you'd like to uh, share with Bapa and I, uh, please feel free to, to put that into the chat. And uh, Walter will either try to answer that directly or he'll uh, surface that up to, to Bapa and I. So, you know, the goal of, of today's session is to basically give you an overview of the features and capabilities of the Microsoft Identity Platform. Um, so we're going to compare the different identity offerings. That's going to include Azure Active Directory, the Azure Active Directory B2B guest user access feature, Azure AD multi-tenant applications, and then Azure AD B2C or business to consumer. Um, we'll talk about how do you choose which of those identity offerings is the most appropriate for your requirements. And then how do you integrate your applications with either Azure AD or Azure AD B2C? So let me go ahead and let's start off with an overview of uh, Azure Active Directory. All right. Most people are familiar with Azure AD. It's really the central identity and control plane for an individual organization. You know, most of you out there probably have an Office 365 tenant or an Azure subscription. You know, this is the, the identity platform that you use to authenticate when you wanna to talk to Azure or when you wanna to talk to Office 365. This holds all of your users and controls how they can sign in or perform authentication. Um, it includes security and governance features like conditional access, multi-factor authentication, privileged access management, et cetera. So thousands of applications are natively integrated with Azure Active Directory, including first party offerings like Office 365, you know, SharePoint, Exchange, Teams, as well as third party offerings like Salesforce, ServiceNow, and Box. Um, but Azure Active Directory is an open identity provider or IDP, which means you can also integrate it with your own line of business applications and let your organization's users sign in with their existing credentials, taking full of all those governance features that I just mentioned a few minutes ago. So by adopting a fully externalized and cloud scale platform, rather than again, a locally hosted, you know, library or a database, you're no longer responsible for collecting, storing and securing any credentials for your application's user. So if we take a look at this really simple diagram here, um, the triangle over here on the right-hand side, that represents your Azure Active Directory or your organization. And you can see we've got our users here. Over on the left-hand side, we've got all of these different applications. And again, we've got first-party applications like Azure and SharePoint, but then we've also got your app down here. And in this particular configuration, where there's a single Azure Active Directory tenant managing a single organization, and you have an application that's integrating with authentication and authorization with that single tenant, we call this a single tenant model or a single tenant application. And the glue that kind of binds your application to Azure Active Directory is known as an application registration. 
the app registration is going to define your, your permissions for which resources that application uh, can access, what type of an application it is, and which you know approach or, or user flow is it going to use to communicate and authenticate the user um, with the directory. All right. So my colleague Bapa is going to do a little demonstration how we on how we create an app registration and then demonstrate once that registration is created, um, how do we then authenticate an application or a user uh, against that? Bapa, why don't you go ahead and take over? Sure, Nick. So let's see what that is. All right. So as uh, Nick and you explained that the the application is kind of a glue between the um, like the um, application register in the Azure Active Directory is kind of a glue between the AD and your application. So let me register an app. If you see, I'm going to use my own client in Azure Active Directory. So if I go to the Azure Active Directory, you see a blade named app registration. So I'll register uh, my applications, just make a name as a long by, you know. You can see that there are many options, the supported account times, who can use this application or access this API. So this can be a single tenant, um, the accounts only in this organization directory, the users only for this directory can access um, this application. Or it can be the multi-tenant or the many any Azure Active Directory tenant or the personal Microsoft account as well. Uh, but the, for the first sake of this demo, I'm going to choose this single tenant uh, option for now. And for this one, I am going to use a, a simple um, application, which is the author.biz. Uh, so that's one of the applications, you know, um, is a publicly available. You can use it uh, for testing our single sign-on and all kind of stuff. So for this, I'm going to add the author uh, login as a redirect URI for this application and let me hit register. And you see that uh, once the application is registered within Azure Active Directory, it creates a service principle behind the scene. And you see the client ID is generated for these applications. And if I go to the authentication tab, uh, you can see that um, the redirect URI is for your real life. You will have your real application URL needs to be added in the redirect URIs. And um, you can have like the web, you can add your single page applications, mobile uh, redirect URIs, all kinds of stuff needs to be, can be added as a redirect URI. Um, and you see that implicit grant and the hybrid flows options, I just have to enable it since I will be testing it from the author.biz uh, applications and there are some advanced settings as well if you wanted to use the ROPC flows uh, the native clients if you wanted to set up uh, you can enable that one in the authentication tab for the app registration as well but for now I just enable the access token and ID token for this app registrations okay so it's updated the application authentication so now what I will be using this uh, application. So this is uh, this is a publicly available um, simple application. We can uh, use the, uh, we can uh, test the, any open ID or OAuth 2.0 or anything. So I'm going to use the open ID connect and you can see that authorization endpoint I already modified based on my tenant name. Uh, the token endpoint is also generated. Um, uh, it's all I grabbed it from my tenant. Uh, so now what I have to do is the client ID. Let me get the client ID for this application, which I just registered. And this is the client ID. And these are the other things like the scope. You can have the open ID, profile, email address. The scope can be defined, the response type, all these things. So this is kind of a mimic that how you will be using from your applications. Uh, but before I hit the submit, let me show you the users here in the Azure in my tenant. So I already created a user, test user. So you see that I have some local users. The test 001 is one of the local users in my active directory tenant. So I'll be using that user to sign in so that you can see 
that um, we can sign in so that we have that user name. So we ask the password. And if the multi-factor is enabled, we can see the multi-factor. I have not enabled it yet, yet so you can enable it for multi-factor authentication using the uh, SMS, with the email, as well as the authenticator. So for now, I just skip it. And once I give the permission to these users, and you can see the JWT um, is being generated for these uh, users. So this is the JWT, the ID token has been generated. For this user, now let's talk about the um, see the JWT, the issuer. You can see the issuer here. This is the my tenant. Now, if I go to this 6B, this is one login dot Microsoft online and 6B. This is my tenant ID. So it let me show you this one. Um, if I go to the overview, so you can see that my tenant ID starts with 6B and ends with 10B. And uh, you can see this the issuer is my tenant. And here um, the issue on the IDP is the same, so that's why the IDP has the claim has not uh, has not been included in the JWT. But in, momentarily we will show you that the difference of the issue and the IDP in, in other demo. But you see the other um, the claims as well, the preferred user name, the uh, norms, and all these things. You can use it in your applications. That in that way you know um, you will know that your user is authenticated, and you can give the access to the APIs and other. Uh, services to that user. So, you know, so this is the way uh, the you are authenticated on any of your user against as your active directory. Great, Baba. Now, Baba, we, we've just done a little demo on, on authentication. Um, mm -hmm. Let's let's talk a little mm -hmm. bit about about authorization and how that plays into this. Yeah, sure, Nate. So let me talk about the authorization. So there are many ways as your active directory, you can give access um to the users um or to the applications and you can create the groups a uh, group of users you can give the access to the group of users as well uh, so the access is basically the giving the permissions you know the permissions can be you can add the app roles to the user levels you can add the app roles um in the, um, in the group levels and um there are other ways the RBAC, which is the role based access control as well there are some built-in roles custom roles like the built-in roles such as owner, contributor, you can add your custom roles as well. So all these things can be done in Azure, you know, so and then the ones uh, you can exactly define that who has access to this application and with which permission. And based on that, you know, you can act on giving the button like your, your API calls, your application and act in such a way based on the user's permission. So that's how it is. So Nick, uh, do you want to show that how the authorization works in Azure Active Directory? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, Baba. Um, so let's go ahead and do uh, do a little bit of a, a demo here and uh, show you, you know, how we can modify that application registration um, that we just looked at a few minutes ago to now include application uh, roles and then assign those roles to, to different users of the application. So I'm back in the Azure Active Directory Blade. I'm on this app registration called FTA Learn Live AAD Demo. I'm going to go down here under manage on the left hand side to app roles. And I don't have any today. So let's go ahead and create an application role. And we'll just call this expense approvers for purposes of the demo. Um, and then I can say, well, which, which uh, um, types in the directory can this role be applied to? And in my case, I just want to apply it to users and groups. You'll notice I can also apply it to applications as well, or I can apply it to both. I'm going to give it a value. Let's we'll call it expense that approve. And we'll make sure we enable that app role and let's go ahead and apply that. All right. So now an application role has been defined for this particular application, FTA Learn Live AAD demo. So what we want to do now is basically assign that role to users of this application, right? And then our application will be able to identify the role that the user belongs to and maybe take some different app, excuse me, actions, or maybe have some different behaviors based on the user's role. Well, every time you create an app registration, there is a corresponding service principle for that application that gets created in Azure Active Directory. And if we want to manage those, 
we can jump back here to the blade uh, for Azure Active Directory. And we're going to jump up to and go to Enterprise Applications. This is where your service principle is going to be managed that was created for that application. So let me find the Learn Live demo app that we're working with. Here it is. So remember, this isn't the application registration. This is the service principle that's associated with that application registration. And the service principle is going to allow me to define the different users and groups that have access to this application. If I look at the properties here under manage, you'll notice that right now this assignment required is set to no. That means anybody in the directory that can log into this tenant can access this application. If I wanna restrict this application to only a certain set of users or a certain set of groups, I can enable this assignment required here and then save this, all right? And then access to that application then becomes restricted to just those users and groups that are listed here for this enterprise application. I'm gonna leave this set to no for now, but let's jump down and add some users and groups here or make some changes. So I already have one user and you'll notice right now his role is default access. When the application doesn't have any roles assigned, there's always a role that's just called default access. So let's go here and jump in and take a look at this user. All right, whoops, sorry, we don't wanna go there. We wanna actually edit this user's assigned role here. So let's click edit. And then right now it says select a role and it says none selected, so let me click that. And you'll notice now I see that expense approvers role that I added to the application registration a few moments ago. So let's assign this user as an expense approver. All right, that assignment has now been made. And let's jump back now to the sample author application that we looked at just a few moments ago. So I'm gonna jump back here. All right, so now we're in author. And just a couple things about author, it's just a little simple test harness that you can use to test authentication flows using a variety of different protocols that are listed here. And then you've got your different endpoints that are supported by the IDP you're talking to. In our case, this is going to be my directory, and I'm a call dirt at onmicrosoft.com. There's the authorization endpoint, the endpoint for issuing the tokens, and a variety of other endpoints for different protocols as well. I've got my client ID that represents my app registration, and I'm only asking for an ID token and a couple other pieces of information. On the additional parameters, I'm forcing a prompt equals login so that the user always is presented with the Azure Active Directory login page and single sign-on basically doesn't kick in and take over from the workstation. So let's go ahead and, and authenticate. All right, let's sign in as a user from that directory. Okay, so this is going to look really similar to the demo that Bapa just did a moment ago, except the thing we're going to notice that's slightly different is now we have this roles claim, and you'll notice it shows me the value of the expense approver role, right? We assigned this user as an expense approver, and now when we retrieve the user's information from Azure Active Directory, my application will be able to identify that he's an expense approver by looking at this roles claim. And again, my application can then take you know, some different uh, actions or do some different behaviors based on which roles uh, my authenticated user uh, belongs to. So that's really where the, we begin to see the power of this auth authorization capability um, from Azure Active Directory. And not only can I do this with, with these application specific roles, I could also do this with user groups, um, Bapa mentioned some of the RBAC capabilities in Azure AD. So a variety of different ways that you can handle authorization um, in your applications using the functionality that's available in Azure AD. Perfect. All right. So Nick just showed that the authorization capabilities of Azure AD. So we saw, so far we saw that how the user cannot get authenticated with an application, how the role can be assigned. So now, 
you wanted to say uh, share that how the guest user can be added uh, in the Azure ready and the guest invite and all these things. Yeah, absolutely. Let's jump back up here real quick and we'll bring up a, a modified version of the diagram that we, we looked at uh, a few moments ago. But the idea with the Azure AD uh, B2B guest user access is, you know, I have, I have my own users that are defined within my tenant here. These are all my organizational uh, team members here. But maybe I have a partner um, that I would like to give access to one of my applications that's defined within my tenant. Okay. And so we have this B2B feature, which basically allows you to invite users um, from other IDPs, um, primarily targeted at other Azure Active Directory organizations, but can also be used with social identity providers, um, as well as other providers that support um, OpenID Connect uh, authentication schemes. But the idea is I'm going to now um, kind of basically send an invitation to another user in some, some partner organization uh, that I want to have access to my, my application. And what's going to happen is basically a, a, what we refer to as a, a guest account or a shadow account is going to get created in my organizational tenant. Um, that user will be identified as a guest. Um, the user's credentials, they don't really exist here in my tenant. It's really just a pointer that says, hey, this user is going to authenticate um, in this other tenant. And then I'm going to grant them some access to this application that happens to reside in, in my tenant. So you'll see the guest user here shows up as a, as a blue um, uh, user over here. And then we see that that user then is represented over here um, and they've been given access to this application uh, that's in my tenant. So, you know, you really don't have to do anything in particular um, in your application when we talk about B2B guest users. Um, they're pretty much treated the same as any other user that's in your um, tenant, and you can grant them permissions, you can add them to groups, um, et cetera. So, you know, BAPA is going to go ahead now and, and do a demo here that's going to show us how do we add a guest user and then go ahead and authenticate that guest user um, using our sample application. So, BAPA, go ahead and take it away. Sure, Nick. So, let me uh, make sure that. Okay. So, so far, what we have seen that, you know, I think uh, myself and Nick so, um, the, showed the how we could log in using the member, the local accounts, like I logged in with the test 001, and uh, Nick also logged in with, uh, with his local accounts for to show the authorization uh, things with Azure AD. But uh, as Nick explained, that we could, there is a B2B capabilities in Azure AD. So if I go to the users and I can have the invite, you can see the create new user and then invite external user as well. So invite external user. If I click on that, let me see the guest. There is an option that you can even bulk invite for like uh, for your um, other uh, your guest users as well. Um, you could just low upload um, the Excel sheet and CSV formats. Uh, in the Azure AD to invite uh, the bulk um, of the users um, at the same time. So if I use my, I'll be using one of my parts to like this. And here you can see that you can put a personal message and <clears throat> that to customize uh, your email, you can have like that so that you know that your user will not be surprised uh, because the invitation email will go to the um, to the users. The email I am using here, the the invitation email will go to that email, and the user has to accept uh, that invitation to get the access or permission to the in the directory. You know, so and there is other way to even the fully customized as well. I mean, there are APIs available. You can use your uh, graph APIs to uh, invite and the send the emails as well. So, and then you can see that you can add uh, these you know, guest users um, to, to the same groups where your local users are. So, and, and the same way it goes for the roles as well. You can add roles, you can assign roles to the guest users um, in your PNX. So, let me invite here. So, 
So as Nick explained that, it's going to create a shadow account in the um, in, in Azure Active Directory tenant. The shadow account will just be, you know, as a placeholder uh, for um, for this this home tenant. But the actual uh, the I author the identity platform for your guest um, will be the different uh, the the tenant they they belongs to. So let me go to my personal email address. Just take a second. Hey, Baba, before you accept that invitation, uh, can you mm -hmm. go back and, and show the status of that user right now? Yeah, sure. So this is, I think it's going to take a second to uh, pop up here in the user list. So let's wait. Sure. Yep, now we can see that. I think that's a, that's a um, good suggestion, uh, Nick. So we can see that guest member one has been created. So that's a uh, shadow account has been created. And you can see that here, if I go to the properties, like it's almost the same, except um, it, it's just not holding the user ID and password for this users. Uh, the identity provider of this user will still be the Hotmail, um, you know, instead of the my tenant. So if I go to this, this one, and you can see the external user state. And it shows the pending acceptance. So you can invite the user, but that does not mean the user has been granted unless the user accept the invitation from their email address. So they have to redeem the uh, that invitation to get the access of this uh, field application up to this uh, in this tenant. So yeah, so Nick, you can see that right. The external user state is pending acceptance. Yep. Uh, yep. Now I can go to the invitation. So if you see the um, invitation here, and here you can here 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 you can see that the which organizations and domain uh, it has been invited to, and um, the the if to accept the invitation you will be sent to this, and there is a button called accept invitation. So let's click on that. So I have to give the permissions of this. Um, you can see the clearly written that uh, which by accepting, you allow this organization to receive your profile data, collect, log your activity, use your profile data and activity data. So it's basically giving the permission. So awesome. So here is why, you know, like the my user, the user which I invited to, it's, it's though it's my personal, but in the real time scenario, it will be your guest. So guest is given permission to access your application. So now if I go to the um, the uh, the shadow account, which I which Nick just mentioned, and if I refresh, and Nick, you see that right, like the external user state is an accepted here. So that means the uh, user already been accepted their invitation. Um, so here is one way that you can even manage. Um, you can even revoke um, the you revoke the guest your guest user properties and your guest uh, the roles as I as Nick explained that um, the role and everything uh, that you, uh, can be assigned uh, to this guest user. You can put um, the guest user in in a group. Uh, you can add memberships roles. Everything can be done almost the similar way the local accounts. Uh, the configuration of the local account. So now I will go to my the sample application author.biz. I'll be using the very similar things uh, which I used before even Nick showed the for the authorization. It's almost the same. I'm going to use the open ID protocol. I am having since I'm using my own tenant, I'm using my same authorization endpoint, token endpoint uh, for my tenant. And let me make sure that the client ID is same for the previous app. So you can go to the Azure Active Directory, app registration. Here is my large live demo. And this is the one. Everything else pretty same, like the scope, response type, the response mode is, is kind of same what we saw before, and the additional parameter prompting was to log in. Nick just explained um, that um, since we put the prompting was to log in, it's going to ask the 
user ID password every time once uh, I hit submit. So let's hit submit. Now what I'm going to do is this time I'm not going to log in with my test account. So instead of that, I'm going to use my Hotmail account, which is the guest, uh, you know, the guest member wants uh, personal email address, uh, which you just invited to, you know, which I just invited to. So it's my personal email address, but in the real time, it will be your guest email address. So guests will use their email address to sign in. And once I accepted it, so it's pretty much same for the ID token has been generated. You see for this guest user. Now there is a uh, difference here. Now if you see the issuer, issuer is still my tenant, which is, if you remember that, this uh, the, the quid which starts from 6B and ends with 10B, which is my tenant ID for my tenant. So issuer is still my tenant. The, the, the token has been generated from my tenant. But the IDP here is the sts.windows.net. Uh, 9188 the idp is different so the idp here is the identity provider of that user which is the hotmail.com so hotmail authenticates uh, this user id password and then it's kind of delegate to the um, to, to my tenant you know and then my tenant actually generates the tokens but for your app perspective um, like you don't you don't care like um, the, you, you just you know uh, giving access like you know that your guest user has been authenticated based on the roles, as uh, Nick explained, based on the roles, you can add the roles and you can even you can, if you have wanted to have a different functionality for your guest user, you could do that. Um, but it's, it's pretty much the same way that how um, you wanted to like uh, treat your um, users in, in, in your application. So if that token will be generated um, to your app and the issuer and the IDP, um, just different for the guest user. Great, so, great demo, Baba. Yeah. Nick, do you think that um, anything else to cover for um, B2B guest user, or we can go to some uh, the next topic? No, I, I think this is great. And I, I think what Bob is going to show us next is, or, or talk about next is, you know, we've seen how we can add a single user uh, from another tenant to an application. What happens if we want to share an application maybe across, you know, all kinds of different, uh, different Azure Active Directory tenants? Go ahead, Bapa. Awesome, Nick. So let's uh, let's discuss about that. So far, we saw that all about the single tenant app. Um, that's in the single, like we configured it applications. Uh, we register an application with the single tenant, and we logged in with our local user, with our guest user, B2B capabilities. We added roles and stuff. Uh, but in real life scenarios, let's say you are making a software as a service app, which you want to maximize the reach to the millions of organizations using Azure AD. You can register your app in as you already as a multi-tenant app if you remember that when we registered our app uh, we saw the um, the different options uh, they can be single tenant it can be part multi-tenant and also in your configuration you can include um, your personal accounts that are used to sign in to services like xbox and uh, skype so let's discuss about this picture if you see that like this is your app and this is your org in your org so far we have your local users we added our guest user in our org and our app was uh, single tenant so we had to use our tenant id and the tenant uh, you know the alias for that to log in to signing uh, in for that user but here um, so nick is going to demo that that how you know we can uh, switch our apps to the multi-tenant and once you switch your apps to a multi-tenant uh, then you know with this app like you can you can just access sign in to your applications um, from any Azure Active Directory tenant. So this is a beautiful capability. You even don't need to um, add any guest user in your org as well. So the partners, your partners um, can log in to your can can be authenticated, you know, to your app uh, from any Azure AD tenant, including the Microsoft um, tenant as well. So and the the the, the Excel the beautiful you know feature here is you know the same authorization feature like groups and roles you can use for your multi-tenant app um so you can have you know the separate the permissions and all stuff with the multi-tenant app as well so one is called your you know home tenant and the other one is the guest tenant so your home tenant 
we'll have the app registered. So um, once, as, as we explained that once app is registered, um, the, there is a service principle gets created in behind the scene and then uh, that, that will be residing in your continent, but your user, which is, which is also a type of service principle, also will be in, the, in your guest tenant. And you can, you know, the distinction between the these two and can manage your permission and stuff. So Nick, you wanted to give a demo for your how you can switch the your app to a multi-tenant app and then how a user can sign in using the multi-tenant apps. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So let me go ahead and we'll jump back here into the into the Azure portal, um, back into the app registration that we used for the demo uh, just a few minutes ago for the authorization piece. So uh, we're back in the portal. We're on our FTA Learn Live AAD uh, demo application registration. Um, under manage, I'm going to go back down to the uh, authentication tab here. And, you know, we've got our redirect URI and which platforms we're supporting. Um, but if we scroll down, you'll see there's a supported account types. And by default, when we set this up, we set accounts in this organiz organizational directory only. So that's our single tenant option. Um, but now we're going to go ahead and switch this to accounts in any organizational directory. So basically any Azure Active Directory. And this now makes our application a multi-tenant application. So let's go ahead and, and save this change. Okay, so app has been updated. Um, let's go back here to the author.biz uh, example now. And let's go back here. I'm gonna bring in my, uh, my uh, default URL. So I've got all the properties uh, filled out for that app. So let me fill this back in. All right, but we're gonna make a couple minor changes here. Um, so by default, the when we're in a single tenant model, all of the endpoints after login.microsoftonline.com include either the directory name or the directory ID in the form of a GUID that represents the tenant that we're gonna sign in with. Um, when we go to a multi-tenant model, we're actually gonna replace this and we're gonna remove the tenant name. And there's an endpoint called common that we now use for our multi-tenant applications. We're just gonna go ahead and switch all these uh, properties here. Let's go ahead and finish off the rest of them. Some of these we're not using for the purposes of the demo, but we'll go ahead and we'll just make them all consistent. All right, so now what we're saying is, hey, we're gonna use the common endpoint to sign in. Um, we're still using the same client ID and everything that, that we talked about uh, earlier um, and let's go ahead then and uh, and uh, sign in here all right so let's go ahead and click submit and now I'm going to use a, an account from a different tenant this time all right so the application is registered in my and I'm a Calder tenant but I've got another uh, tenant that I use for my uh, SharePoint environment so let me go ahead and uh, use this guy Right. So then we'll go ahead and click next here. And let's put in his password. And we'll go ahead and sign in. And we'll skip this for 14 days. And there's my learn live demo. I'm going to accept the uh, permission request and give it my consent. And now I'm logged into that application. And again, if we look at the issuer of the token uh, this time, you know, this 18A here, 0090, that is my and I'm a Calder tenant. But if we look at the IDP where the user authenticated, you know, this F1D202A4, that's my Microsoft 818 uh, directory. So, you know, without basically making any code changes or anything like that and making a minor change to the app registration, I've moved my application from a single tenant to a multi-tenant model where I can allow sign-ins from any Azure Active Directory tenant uh, going forward. So really powerful feature, um, especially for folks who are building SaaS applications or applications that are gonna be shared across many different organizations. So really, really great feature. Um, yeah. Okay. So yeah. It, it, yeah. that, that kind of wraps up the, the focus, at least for the first part of the talk, on uh, the features of Azure Active Directory. So we, we talked about single tenant apps. Uh, we talked about the B2B guest user access feature. 
And we also spoke about multi-tenant applications. So now we're going to kind of transition over and begin talking about the capabilities of Azure AD B2C or our business to consumer product. And I'm going to let Bapa kind of take over and, and do an overview on B2C. Go ahead, Bapa. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Nick. As, as Nick, as you just said, you know, we have covered uh, almost everything in Azure AD um, in the, the sign-in perspective with the single tenant, and multi tenant and B2B. But when, like, um, you're, like, in the other scenarios, when your app is intended to be used by the external user, your end customer. So Microsoft has an offering, uh, which is called as an Azure AD B2C. So that, that, um, that you know, targets the individual consumers and um, customers and citizens. You can use the Azure AD B2C. The Azure AD B2C is still um, the built up on the global cloud scale Azure AD platform, but it has uh, you know the unique features to provide your apps with customer identity access management capabilities. Now let me this this diagram. You know B2C is a totally separate um, tenant. Like you have to create a different tenant um, for B2C if you are like to implement B2C for your consumer um, and the end customers. It can have a local account and also a social account, which we, which we are going to discuss momentarily. But if you see the diagram, the local accounts will be added. This is your consumer accounts. So far in the Azure AD, you know, it, is, it was either your partner um, or whatever you can I so that your partner, your um, the other uh, your employees and those those stuffs were added in your as your AD tenant, but in B two C you'll be your end customers, your consumer customers. So and there are like the if you see that um, they can register the very similar way. What how we register in as your AD? The apps can be registered. The multiple apps can be registered in B two C as well. You can have your web app, a mobile app, your native app, anything can be registered in B2C. And the powerful feature here is to customize your user journeys. Um, you know, the user journeys means the sign-in, the sign-up, you know, the profile editing, and the reset password. Those are the main four core user journeys can be customized by either user flows or the custom policies. Now, user flows are kind of, you know, it's kind of a configuration B2C has. Uh, Nick is going to show uh, in momentarily that how we could you know um, like at least see that user flows and the custom policies you can have a different custom policies for each of your app and uh, so that that way you know you could um, like the uh, change like the have a different kind of user functionalities or user journeys for your apps um, the single app can even use the multiple policies as well um, for the different scenarios so yeah, you know there are like the many different unique features B two C provides. So Nick, you wanted to just show that how you know it looks like in uh, Azure B two C tenant. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, Bapa. Let's go ahead and and mm -hmm. talk about um, Azure AD B two C and the different experience you get from what we see with Azure Active Directory for the enterprise. So um, I'm in uh, an Azure AD B two C tenant. Uh, as Bapa mentioned, it's basically a separate standalone tenant, uh, separate from Azure Active Directory. Um, so you get a complete set of blades and different tools that you can use uh, to build applications on top of Azure AD B2C. Uh, similar, you'll notice a lot of uh, features that kind of overlap between B2C and Azure AD for the enterprise. Um, so we have app registrations here, very similar to what we had in Azure AD. Um, we also have a list of identity providers. So not only can I sign in with local accounts uh, that I create in the B2C tenant, I can federate with other identity providers, allowing me to sign in with accounts from these different uh, providers. And they can be enterprise uh, tenants, they can be Azure Active Directory, um, they can be social identity providers, a lot of different options there. Um, we also have a feature called API connectors that allows me to interject my own business logic into these authentication workflows uh, that Bapa mentioned when he referred to user journeys. And we have two ways of, of building these user journeys in Azure AD B2C. We have a kind of a graphical designer for user flows. And then if you need to so do something really custom and really complex, we have this feature called the identity experience framework um, that can help out there. So, you know, the directory is a standalone directory. It has its own list of users. Um, one of the things that's really great about B2C is I can customize the list of user attributes in the directory. 
So we have a lot of built-in uh, attributes, but I can add my own custom attributes to the user and then capture that information at user registration time, um, allow the user to edit that as part of their profile, um, et cetera. So it's very, very um, extensible. Um, we have complete branding capabilities as well as the capability to fully customize uh, the UI with our own HTML templates, um, custom style sheets, and even JavaScript. So let's take an example of a user flow here that's really custom. So if we create a new user flow, you'll see what the options are. I can have a combined sign up and sign in. So a, basically a register and login. I've got an experience where I can edit my profile. I can do a password reset or I can have a separate sign up experience and a separate sign in experience. So I'm just gonna pick one of my uh, sign up experiences here, sign in, sign up. And I'm gonna go ahead and actually run this. One of the great things about Azure AD B2C is that I can test these user flows right within the portal before I even integrate them with my application. So I can use this little run user flow feature here, go ahead and fill in some properties and we won't spend a lot of time on on these, these properties um, at this point. You know, we've got a further, uh, we've got another session where we do a full deep dive into B2C, but we'll go ahead and we'll just set some of these properties up so that we can go ahead and actually execute the user flow so we can see what the login experience would look like for this particular user. And again, you'll notice this doesn't look anything like the typical Azure Active Directory login page, right? It's a fully customized HTML template I've got my own style sheets. I've got some custom JavaScript in here. So I really get the ability to make these authentication experiences look and feel like a native part of my application without the hassle of managing the user identities within my own database or within my own environment. I think uh, Nick just making clear that the user on the sign-in page is um, so on. Uh, I don't think that I'm... Oh, did you want me to actually execute the flow here? Oh, so did it did not execute it, right? So I think that's good, okay. I was thinking yeah, yeah. about it. We'll on another one here in, in, in just a moment. Let's go ahead and uh, pick another pick another flow and we'll actually go ahead and, and uh, uh, just run one of these and we'll actually uh, go ahead and, and, and log it in okay. and, and take a look at it. So uh, let's go ahead and, and jump back here. We'll, we'll pick another um, example. Uh, real quick here, let um, me go ahead and we'll just we'll just go ahead and run this guy here. I'm intentionally picking this test harness URL that we've got, this JWT.ms, um, as the reply URL. And what that's going to allow me to do, and it's really nice from a testing perspective, is once I authenticate this user. The access token information will be dumped into that JWT.ms um, website. And it actually just basically dumps the entire token here. And then it decodes it at the bottom, which gives me a great opportunity to look and see what are all the claims that are going to be returned um, by that so access Nate, token. Uh, we, don't, we still see that as your active activity. Oh, hold on. Let me change my sharing options here real quick. Sorry about that. Yep. Now we can see it. Okay, can you guys see that now? Yep. Okay, excellent. So which means you probably didn't see the login flow either, did you? Let me go ahead and... Um, yeah, we did not. I think that's, I, I was just... Uh, no yeah, yeah, that's, that's that my fault. Now. I forgot, I gotta, I gotta switch these, these uh, sharing options here. Um, so let me go ahead and quickly uh, share this back out and we'll just share the entire window here this time so we can see. Uh, what's going on? Okay. All right. So let me go ahead here and we'll we'll run this again. And so now this is the customized uh, UI experience that I was talking about that you couldn't unfortunately see before. Uh, let me go ahead and sign a local user into the account here for the attendant. All right. And let me go ahead and you'll see now, like I said, the token will get dumped into this JWT.ms site and it'll get decoded here at the bottom so that you can actually see all the claims information that B2C is going to return to your application. And if you're missing some claims, you can always go back and tweak that user flow to add additional attributes to the claims bundle 
that you'd like to be returned to your application by B2C when the user logs in. All right. Okay. Okay, Bapa, I'll turn it back over to you and you can talk about um, the social identity capabilities that we have for B2C. Yeah, sure, Nick. So, uh, so far, as, as Nick has uh, explained that the, the, the entire capabilities of the, um, the B2C, you know, it can have the uh, different features, if the journeys, attributes, and all stuff. The other thing is, other than local accounts, we can have the social identities, like social accounts for uh, your consumer customer as well. So you can allow your users to sign in with an identity they already have from the social providers such as Facebook, Google, Microsoft, LinkedIn, and any other, you know, any other uh, supported native device Azure ADP B2C. Now, if you see the diagram, very similar to the Azure B2B guest users, like the um, other than the local users, we are adding the social identities. You know, there will be a shadow account that's created in the B2C, but the B2C will not be the identity provider of this account. Instead, um, you know, the identity provider will be the Facebook or Google or Twitter or, you know, LinkedIn. Those those are social media will be the identity provider. The B2C will still be generating the um, the token for your app and, you know, your app will interact with the B2C uh, thing for your B2C client as well. So um, let me show you that. And, you know, this is the way, like, you can, you can uh, in the registration time, you can say that, uh, if, if, if any user, your consumer users wants to use any social identities, you can mark that. Uh, you can all customize in your custom policies or user flows as well. So, you know, this way, if you don't need to manage the passwords of those um, users, the social identity user can even, it will be easier for the users as well. So let me go to my tenant. And... I have a sign in and sign up user flow, the combined user flow uh, created. And if you see the identity provider, I already, you know, like the uh, configured it, uh, the, uh, my LinkedIn uh, social identity provider. And if I click the manage identity provider, let me show you here as well. So what I just had to do, you know, have to had to create an uh, app in the LinkedIn developer uh, portal i just had to um, uh, you know the, register this callback url get the client id client secret from the linkedin app it's pretty much very same for all other identity provider as well so you have to go to that identity provider whether it's an amazon or facebook you have to register your app there get the client id client secret and come here in the b2c and, and configure so kind of all um, almost similar way we can uh, do that so since my LinkedIn uh, account is my LinkedIn is configured for this user flow, and I have my LinkedIn users are added as a shadow account. So let me show you that one as well. I go to that so to see users. And so here it is the source is the LinkedIn. Yeah, you can see that uh, my name has been added. Uh, I'm a member, but the source is LinkedIn. The source is not the Azure Active Directory. So now, if I go to the user flows, you can see sign up. If I run the user flows, as Nick explained, this can be like the user flows can run for your um, social user or local user, does not matter. They will see the same customized page layout, and all the user attributes can come for your social identity user as well. So if I run my user flows here, so you see the i have not customized as nick you did so you know i can see the very kind of out of box uh, sign in page uh, for the b2c but here the tweak is um, we are giving an option to sign in with your social accounts i should have changed the name of the app but the it's, it's pretty obvious right uh, we are giving an option to sign in users by their LinkedIn accounts. So if I click the LinkedIn accounts, you know, I think since I was already logged in in my LinkedIn, it's it's redirected to the LinkedIn with the session redirect. So uh, customers will be redirected to that LinkedIn. And uh, since it's so auto-populated because I was um, logged in in LinkedIn in the browser, I sign in. So LinkedIn is going to authenticate my uh, users. 
and we'll give it back to the Azure ADP to CP9. So now here is the things. As we all saw that, uh, as we just saw that for B2B users, it's pretty much same. The issuer is the B2C tenant. If you see that this is my tenant, uh, tenant ID and stuff. The, the token has been generated by my B2C tenant, but the IDP is here, the LinkedIn.com. So the user has been authenticated. And the, the identity provider is still LinkedIn.com. And you can add the user attribute, as Nick explained, the new user attributes can be added and everything can run the very similar way for the local accounts and physical accounts. Excellent. So yeah, Nick, so we think we covered the um, social accounts as well. Now, we wanted to cover that the next topic, which is the comparing, I believe, uh, oh, no, the enterprise identities. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. So, you know, Bapa yeah. just did a great, great discussion and demo yeah. on how we can integrate the social identity providers with our B2C tenant. But let's say we have maybe an enterprise uh, tenant. So, you know, if we look at our diagram here that I'm, I'm displaying again, uh, it's, it's really beginning to expand, um, you know, where we started over here with nothing but the original uh, single tenant. Now we've got all these features being added. Um, but we've got the B2C tenant now being extended with these social identity providers. But let's say maybe I've got, you know, an ADFS tenant or I've got a Salesforce or maybe I'm running something like an identity server. Um, and I want to use those enterprise accounts to be able to authenticate to maybe an application that I'm also hosting on a B2C tenant. So what this is going to allow us to do is, is again, we're going to take advantage of these great federation features in B2C and extend that federation to now include um, an enterprise IDP. So let me jump back over here in the portal. Um, we're back on my B2C tenant. And if we take a look at my identity providers here, um, you'll notice that I've got an open ID connect identity provider um, added. Uh, and it's actually gonna be an identity server for uh, instance that I've got up and running uh, in Azure. And if I come over here now and look at my user flows, um, I've got a user flow here that's connected uh, to that identity server right here, ID serve four. And, and the way you do this is when you set up the user flow, you can specify which identity providers are going to be supported by that user flow. So in my case, I've got the, the local account, which is the email signup. And I've also said we're also going to accept logins from identity server four um, as well. So let's go ahead and run this uh, user flow. And we'll go ahead and just fill in the properties again that we need to get the test harness up and running. And we'll redirect the traffic again to the JWT.MS um, test harness there. And let's go ahead and run this flow here. All right, so we've got the local account sign up here at the top. And in this particular case, I'm using just some basic branding. So this is the basic branding capabilities versus the full customization that we looked at a few minutes ago. But you'll notice I've got an option here at the bottom that says log in with identity server four. So go ahead and click that. And I'm not sure why the identity server is not working. It was just up a moment ago. All right, well, let's try that one more time. So it's pretty much the same way, right? Um, Nick, they didn't going to redirect. Yeah, the, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Like, you know, and, instead of the link. Like, oh, there we go. Yeah. I, oh. yeah okay. It was probably just my uh, website mm -hmm. was sleeping because it's in the free tier. So um, so I'm, I'm actually on my identity server for now. I'm going to log in as this user and identity server. And just like Bapa showed earlier with the social provider, you know, we see that the token is still being issued. Uh, by the B2C tenant, but the IDP in my case is the um, the URL of my identity server four that I'm running on an Azure uh, app service over here. And I've intentionally included uh, another uh, claim here to actually get me the original token that was issued by the originating IDP. So I could extract this and do things with it if I wanted to, but you'll notice I've got a bunch of information, you know, Bob Smith, uh, he came from identity server, and so on and so forth. So this allows me to bring in other IDPs, you know, again, an identity server, a Salesforce, you know, a Ping Federate, uh, any of these other major identity providers out there, federate that with my B2C tenants 
And then users of those IDPs can leverage my applications um, that are registered in that B2C tenant. All right. So if we go ahead and, and go back to our diagram here, um, we'll see we've kind of uh, included now these enterprise identities. But this is a pretty common scenario as well, right? I create a B2C application um, for my, my consumers, but I also want people uh, in my own organization to have access to that application as well. You know, maybe these people in my org are the administrators of this app and they need to be able to access it to make administrative changes and maybe manage the application. So I want these people from my Azure Active Directory tenant to be able to basically authenticate um, against this B2C application and log in. So I can federate an Azure Active Directory tenant as well as these other enterprise identities here. So if we jump back over here, I'm actually going to go ahead and, and uh, pop back up to uh, my B2C tenant here. Let me switch directories. So now I'm going to back in my B2C tenant. Let me go to the B2C blade. And this time I'm going to use a, a user journey that I've defined in a um, custom policy versus a user flow. But the concepts are the same. And remember, this was my um, Active Directory tenant I was using earlier, this NI Macau org right here. So let's go ahead and sign in with him. And you'll notice the experience from a test harness perspective for the uh, user journeys that I build with the identity experience framework in the GUI user flow designer is exactly the same. You know, basically behind the scenes, we're, we're using the same code. So now you'll notice at the bottom, I've got an organization or school account option here. And you'll notice, you know, not only can we use a single tenant integration here, this could be also a multi-tenant application registration where I could have a user coming from any Azure Active Directory tenant federated to this B2C tenant and be able to access those applications. So if I come back here and let's go ahead and run this now. All right, I'm gonna click organization or school account. Now, because I'm running in a window here uh, in Edge and I'm already signed into my workstation and my Microsoft account also is a member of that NI McCall Dur tenant that I've got, this is gonna actually do a single sign-on experience when I click this. All right, so we can see that, you know, again, the token was issued by the B2C tenant, but in the in this case, the IDP that authenticated the user, um, this 72F is the actual GUID for the, the Microsoft tenant. So there's Nicholas McCollum, and now I'm authenticated to that, to that B2C application using my Azure AD credentials. So provides us a great deal of flexibility, and this kind of finishes off the full capabilities uh, uh, you know, that are illustrated by the Microsoft Identity Platform in our diagram here now. So again, we started out with the single tenant, expanded in uh, guest users um, with B2B. Um, we added in the multi-tenant application capabilities. Then we brought in B2C with local accounts, added in our social identities, our enterprise identities, and then circled all the way back around and then brought in our Azure AD users to, to leverage those B2C applications um, as well. So, yeah, next topic is, you know, we've got all these different offerings. You know, we've got Azure AD, we've got B2B, we've got B2C. How, how do we select the appropriate offering? Um, so we kind of got this little flow chart, this little decision tree that kind of helps to, uh, to make those decisions. Let me bump this up a little bit more and make it a little bit easier uh, for folks to see, but basically... Oops, let's not do that. Um, so, you know, the first thing you want to ask yourself are, are the users of this application only from your own organization? Well, if the answer to that question is yes, then you can basically go with a single tenant Azure Active Directory application, right? Pretty straightforward. It's a little more complicated as we go along. If they're not from my own organization, should basically users from any and all Azure Active Directory tenants be able to assign in? 
If the answer to that is yes, we're probably looking at some kind of an enterprise SaaS scenario. So then in that case, we could go with a multi-tenant Azure Active Directory application. If the answer to that question is no, then we can say, well, are the users explicitly trusted or invited? All right. So if the answer to that question is no, and we want to support you know, support some kind of a self-service sign-up, then we're looking at Azure AD B2C, right? If the answer is yes, where we're going to explicitly trust certain users or invite certain users, um, then do we want to see those users in your own Azure AD tenant as guests? Okay. All right. If the answer is no, again, we're going to fall back into the B2C scenario, right? We don't want them in our own tenant, not even as guests, so we're going to push them off to a separate Azure AD B2C tenant. If the answer to that question is yes, then we get down to a really key question here. Do I need extensive support for branding and customization of the user interface? The minute this comes up and the answer to that question is yes, you're always going to be going to Azure AD B2C. This is off, going to offer you the most flexibility as far as the ability to not only customize the user interface, but to inject your own business logic into those authorization scenarios is part of that, that B2C user flow experience. If I don't need extensive branding, um, are the users in Azure Active Directory already? Yes, go to B2B. No, um, can I federate those users? Yes, go to B2B. Um, no, I can't. Is there a creating a just-in-time or unmanaged Azure Active Directory tenant? Acceptable, yes, Azure AD B2B, no, fall back down and then go to Azure AD B2C. So again, this content is, is publicly available. It's linked to um, in, in, from the session here. So again, useful flowchart if you're trying to make a determination, hey, what's, what's the right you know, solution for me on the Microsoft Identity Platform for my particular um, application, all right? So last, last um, topic here um, is kind of this real world uh, scenarios with external identities. And it's not an uncommon case where I have an application where not only do I have, um, you know, my internal users need to use that application, um, but I've also got partners that are going to use that application. And then maybe I've got end user consumers or customers that are going to use that application as well. And so uh, there's a link here to this Woodgrove uh, CIAM demo web application. Um, and if we kind of just take a quick look at this, um, what you'll see is an application that's been built to demonstrate how you could support all these three different user populations in a single application, right? So, you know, primarily, if you're integrating these identity platform offerings into your application, um, your primary SDK is going to be the Microsoft Authentication Library. It's available across a variety of different platforms, obviously .NET, uh, Java, PHP, Python, um, JavaScript, et cetera. Um, that's going to be your primary tool for integrating these. But you can integrate different um, portions of the identity platform into the same application. So this application demonstrates how I could have, you know, customers signing in over here using a B2B sign-in experience. Uh, my business customers, who would be my internal org users, signing in with their Azure Active Directory accounts. And then partners over here logging in through an Azure AD B2B experience, all in the same application. So again, this is available. You can download this. Good demo app to look at if you want to see, you know, how would I build something along these lines using the SDKs that we provide um, for the platform? So, you know, that's that's kind of, you know, in a nutshell, uh, a really a wrap up of the things, you know, on the Microsoft Identity Platform. And, and we've obviously got uh, deeper dives that are available for a lot of these um, topics. This was really designed to kind of give you an overview of the capabilities that are available across the entire the entire platform. So, you know, just a quick recap of the things that we, we touched on today. Um, you know, we talked about 
um, Azure Active Directory, both from a single tenant perspective, as well as a multi-tenant um, application perspective. Um, we talked about how to invite guest users into our tenant. So if we've got a certain specific set of users that we want to provide access to um, in, our, in our particular application, we can do that via the, the B2B feature. Um, then we also took a look at Azure AD B2C and how that can not only be used um, with local accounts in the directory, but how we can also expand that to allow users to log in with their social accounts. Also federate with um, users from other enterprise IDPs, as well as federate with Azure Active Directory users, um, allowing all those, those different um, authentication uh, providers to be used to access applications that have been registered um, with Azure AD uh, B2C. So, um, you know, yeah, great you, discussion with you. Great, great discussion here, uh, uh, Nick. I think uh, we, we have covered almost everything, right? Like the comparing. So you explained so well that how we can, like, the, like our customer can choose the, you know, the different identity offerings and all the things of uh, Azure AD, ADP to c and B2B stuff. Yep. So. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, I think uh, hopefully the demos uh, provided a lot of light on how some of these features work and the capabilities that are available uh, to you to build your own applications on top of the platform. Um, again, you know, use the link here. Um, there's some great interactive learning exercises, videos, uh, and, and practice uh, that you can use to kind of build this out and get some some skills to you can incorporate these into your own applications. And then, you know, just so you're aware, um, the next Fast Track Learn Live session is coming up on November 29th um, on Azure Monitor. So um, if you're interested in Azure Monitoring, please absolutely uh, join us uh, for that session. Um, thanks, everybody, for your, your attendance today. I uh, really appreciate it. Um, Bapa, thanks again for your assistance, and Walter for moderating the chat room. Um, Thank you. Great Nick. session. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for leaving. Hopefully, this will be useful. Uh, for our viewers as well. All right. Take care, everyone.